Hey folks, how you doing? It's Larry and I'm out here with the Murder Hornet. And uh, as I was riding, I thought of some pretty serious stuff I wanted to talk to you about. And that is, uh, this morning I woke up and they had named this guy uh, Speaker of the House, uh, Mike Johnson, o Olin, jo Howard Johnson, Anal Johnson, I don't know. Howard Johnson is right. Thank you, man. Anyway, new Speaker of the House. Uh, he had written about criminalizing gay sex. And you know, I don't have any skin in the game, so to speak, about gay sex, but um, it's an impingement on American freedom and it brought me back to another time, the time of the Hollywood 10 and the HUAC committee hearings uh, in Washington. So to give you a little background, in the 1930s, after the Great Depression, the American Communist Party formed and they were mostly there to help form labor unions. And the labor unions protested against unfair practices because during the Depression a lot of businesses took advantage of labor. And uh, the unions formed and then gave some money to Russia because they were fighting Germany and fascism. And a lot of the folks in Hollywood who contributed or were fellow travelers with this very liberal Communist Party uh, became Franklin Roosevelt, New Deal Democrats, and went on with their lives. Well, when Russia became an enemy after World War II, Joseph McCarthy formed a committee called the House Un-American Activities Committee. And he and his aide, Richard Nixon, you might have heard of him, called in these very uh, liberal Hollywood people to testify and swear that they were never members of the Communist Party and also name other names. Suck it to me. <laughs> they were afraid, you see, that writers were putting communist themes into movies and that American patrons were too stupid to detect what is a communist theme and what isn't. So anyway, people were hauled in in front of the committee and 10 people refused to name names refused to participate and one of them was my family's good friend Edward Dimitrik. Now Edward went to jail along with the Hollywood 10 for six months and was going to have his family's expenses paid for by the First Amendment Committee or the Committee for the First Amendment uh, sponsored by Humphrey Bogart and Lauren Bacall. Well the money never came and every day, Eddie's wife, Jeannie, came to the jail with their severely handicapped son, Ricky, who had childhood schizophrenia, and Vicky, and uh, she was pregnant with Rebecca, still a very close friend of mine, uh, and pleaded with Eddie to get out of jail. Name names, do what he had to do. And finally, Eddie, who was a man of great, great moral turpitude, agreed to go back in front of the committee and name names. So he, he basically recanted, named five very known communists and got a, a portion of his career back. He mostly worked in Europe. He did some stuff in America, he did Mirage. But I came to know about this because our family living room was filled with their stuff. When they couldn't afford to live, because Eddie couldn't work, they left their stuff at my family's house. Uh, Eddie was a very, very special guy to me. You know the marriage game thing that I do, for instance, like um, what if uh, Elkie Summers married Marvin Seltzer? Would her name be Elkie Seltzer? Stuff like that. Well, that was Eddie. And he and I were very close over the years. And when he passed away, to give me an idea of the effect of the Hollywood 10, among his pallbearers were me, my then wife Annie, my brother Edward, Frank Tifolita's son, Raymond, and my dad. There were about 10 people at the funeral. So uh, this is what you get when you have a witch hunt where people are persecuted for their beliefs that are supposedly un-American. I'll get you, my pretty, and your little dog, too. <laughs> so when I think of Anal Johnson or Mike Johnson or whatever his name is, I reflect on how this country can turn on people so rapidly and deprive them of their rights. It's, it's just sad. Anyway, what can we do about it? Vote. Uncle Larry wants you. All right, with that in mind, I'm heading home. Take it easy.